<laughs> you guys, chess is so dynamic and awesome at the same time. I'm about to share with you some beautiful traps that you will never forget in your life, you guys. And I'm so excited about this. Now, let me say this. Once your opponent plays knight g7, it's time for you to start helping them pack their bag and go home. Or well, let me put it this way. Once your opponent plays knight g7, it is time for you to start looking for tricks, tactics, combinations, and traps. And I'm going to show you how to do that in five different openings. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Casper Chess, where chess is never boring, you guys. If you are not a subscriber yet, please do subscribe to my channel. And remember to hit the like button to encourage me to keep on making more wonderful videos just like this one. All right. Trap number one. This is where you look out for knight g e7 in the modern defense. Let me explain. So you start with pawn to e4 and your opponent plays pawn to g6. This is called the modern defense. It is somewhat different from the perk and the king's Indian defense. In that, black does not really plan to play knight g f6 anytime soon unless they just want to transpose the game back into the king's indian defense or the perk defense otherwise knight g f6 is not an idea in this defense now wait a second the modern defense is one of the greatest defenses of all times in fact when you look at the masters database here you see that black scores quite well using this defense unlike many other defenses. In fact, it is one of Carlsen's favorite defenses of all times, as you can see for yourselves here. So from here, I suggest that you go point to d4, gaining more central space. Bishop g7 is what they play. Now you go knight c3. And then here they'll play point to d6. Anyways, here I recommend you just go with your two knights, knight f3, and one of the top played moves according to the leeches database or what you are going to see many people playing is knight c6 they are doing all this to delay the move knight f6 as long as they can and with this move black is provoking white to play pawn to d5 because they are very comfortable if this happens they'll simply play knight e5 and after you take they take back with their bishop and what have they done here they have simplified the game from the king's side, at least by eliminating your king's knight. Anytime soon, this bishop will go back. And maybe this is when they are going to consider playing knight f6 after bishop g7 and then they castle short. So this is just a simplification. So that's why you will see most of your opponents playing knight to c6. However, we are just going to continue playing our chess here. Just bishop c4, developing our minor pieces. On the most active squares and then you will see them playing pawn to e5 right away that was another purpose of playing knight to c6 on the previous move to support the upcoming pawn to e5 so now you can see how masters play their chess you guys so after you see the move pawn to e5 in the modern defense this is where i recommend that you play this interesting move knight d5 not the best move according to stockfish but it's just an interesting move at human level which might confuse a lot of your opponents completely giving up your pawn on d4 look at this if they take it looks like you have just lost a pawn i mean you cannot take because they're going to take back with their bishop right well i suggest you don't take it is time to play bishop g5 now that's the reason why we put the knight on d5 in order to play bishop g5 next listen they don't usually play pawn to f6 because they have plans to castle short anyways and black fears that he might open up this diagonal for our light squad bishop so that's why they don't play pawn to f6 and this is when you're going to see them playing knight g e7 what did i say in the introduction of this video once you see knight g e7 ladies and gentlemen it is time for you to ask your opponent to resign in a polite way yeah be nice i mean why is this a positional mistake well we now simply get back our pawn for free hence sacrificing our knight let me show you what is happening here let's say knight takes d4 well here we just simply play bishop takes e7 attacking the queen and after queen d7 now we can play bishop f6 and we are assured of winning one piece here either the bishop or the knight if they take our bishop we have knight takes on f6 check plus winning the queen if they don't do this instead let's say they play knight e6 removing their knight from danger 
while we still capture the free bishop attacking the rook if they move their rook away from danger or take our bishop on g7 we still have knight f6 check and winning the queen so this is the little trap that happens if black takes on d4 with his knight so that's why you will see most of your opponents here taking with their bishop bishop takes d4 which is even worse because now we can simply play this sacrificial move watch queen takes d4 what a brilliant move here we are simply attacking the rook on h8 and i'm going to show you what happens if white castles short instead of taking the queen but here let's just say knight takes the queen this is a mate into you guys knight f6 check and after king f8 here comes checkmate with bishop h6 so now that you know what we are up to in this video, let me be a little bit fast and cover the remaining four openings where this trap can also occur. All right, so trap number two, this may happen in the three knights opening, Stenitz defense. So you start with pawn to e4, they play e5. Knight f3 attacking the pawn, knight c6 defending this pawn. Knight c3 developing a minor piece, I mean. And again, when you look into the master's database, Pawn to g6, okay? Pawn to g6 is the second top played move, which is called the Stenitz defense. It's quite a very powerful defense if played correctly. But whenever you see this again, I recommend you go pawn to d4. Go for it, baby. If they take your pawn, which is what they are going to do most of the times. So you just simply play knight. Your knight can never be attacked at this square. Don't be afraid of playing knight d5. So... This is where you're going to see them play bishop g7, the top played move, by the way. And what do you do? You go bishop g5. <laughs> That's why we play knight d5 to team up with this dark squad bishop move, okay? Bishop g5 attacks the queen. Now, the right move here, the correct continuation according to Stockfish is knight c e7, which looks weird. Why developing a knight and then undeveloping it on a bad square? I mean, what are we doing with this other knight? It doesn't make sense. So at human level, what you're going to see is knight g is 7. At least blocking the attack on the queen. Now, hold on. Still looking at how to punish this knight g is 7 move. Your eyeballs should now start rolling. Now play knight takes d4. A brilliant move. Which is a sacrifice, by the way. You already know what happens after knight takes d4. So they are going to take with a bishop. <laughs> after which you take back with what? Queen takes d4. By the way, in the game that we are analyzing, this actual game, white didn't find this move. Queen takes d4. They played bishop takes e7. Imagine a 2600 federated chess player missed queen takes d4 in this exact position. So now you see the importance of this video, you guys. I'm sure if you watched this video before playing this game, he was definitely going to find queen takes d4 a sacrifice. But anyways, he played bishop takes e7 and then his opponent took back. That's when he took, I mean, this was not good, but he still went on to win because of how active his position is and the fact that he was a better player. But to end the game quickly, you guys, always remember that you can always and always sacrifice your queen on d4 so that if they take, now you go queen f6 check, king f8 the only move, and bishop f6 checkmate. These two squares are covered by our knight. So let's go back a little bit and see what else could have happened. Okay, again, after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, and pawn to g6, the standard's variation, I said go d4 right away. If they take, what do you do? You don't take back. You play knight d5. If they play bishop g7, now you go bishop g5. I mean, the moment you play knight d5, bishop g5 is what should be in your mind next, provided that they haven't played knight f6 yet. So instead of knight c e7 or knight g e7, you may see black playing pawn to f6. What do you do? I don't know. Because I'm very surprised that up to now you are just watching without even considering to give this video a thumbs up. Come on, you guys. Let's help each other. Hit that like button to encourage me to keep on making more wonderful videos just like this one. I mean, that's how you encourage me to continue making these wonderful videos just for you guys and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel you can do that during this break which is coming come on you can do that i mean don't skip this video just do it let's go 
Okay, back to this position. We just played bishop g5, okay? And then instead of black playing knight c7 or knight g7, what if they played pawn to f6? I said I don't know. I lied. I just wanted you to subscribe to my channel and to hit that like button. But here you simply go bishop a4, attacking the pawn on c7. And after d6, I mean, that's when you take back the pawn. If they play knight g7 this time, you go bishop c4. I mean, just because you are under attack, it doesn't mean you need to take. Maybe use that opportunity to develop your other piece, which was doing nothing on its initial square. Because here, if black takes, he's just going to help us position our light squared bishop on a better square. So they'll play something like knight e5, attacking our bishop. Now we go bishop b3. We don't want to lose our bishop pair for no reason. Knight takes d5. Well, we don't take back with our light squared bishop because we are going to help black to develop his pawn, which was doing nothing on c7 to c6. So we take back with our e pawn because we also have some chances of playing knight e6 in the near future. Let's say if they cast short, well, we can even play queen d2 here, intending to go bishop h6 next and start expanding on the king side. We cast along. I mean, we still have life in this game so that's just how to continue if they play pawn to f6 on this move all right so now we can move on to the third opening where you can look out for this trap all right so our third opening is the Rui lopez now the game that i'm about to show you guys was played by none other than international master eric rosen versus fide master Alsen mestinikov i think so the game was played on leeches by the way and eric rosen started with pawn to e4 then his opponent played e5 knight f3 knight c6 i mean instead of playing bishop c4 the italian game eric rosen played bishop b5 which is the Rui lopez s6 is the top played move then eric played bishop a4 and knight g e7 was played this is called the Rui lopez cosio defense there are over 33,000 games that have reached this particular position you guys in fact it is the third most played move in the masters database so not a dubious defense at all the plan is just to fianchero the bishop and castle short or probably go pawn to a5 right away and take back with the knight d6 is also an option but here eric just developed his queen's knight and then his opponent played pawn to g6 now you see this idea and immediately eric striked in the center with pawn to d4 he understood that pawn to g6 equals pawn to d4 pawn to g6 equals pawn to d4 and this is when his opponent took i mean what else and then Eric, being Eric, played the move that I'm advising you guys to play, knight d5. This is a brilliant move. The idea is that if knight takes, you take back with your pawn, attacking black's knight on c6, and later on take this pawn on d4, eyeballing the rook on h8. So his opponent played bishop g7. Hmm. This is when Eric realized that this knight goes together with bishop g5, pinning the knight on e7 to the queen. And after pawn to b5, that's what Eric's opponent played. Well, instead of playing bishop b3 just rescuing his bishop, Eric realized that he can as well just go for knight x d4. <laughs> Sacrificing two of his minor pieces. The idea was that if his opponent took on d4 with his knight, the queen on d8 was going to fall after bishop takes e7. And so let's say if his opponent played b takes a4 instead, Eric was planning to play knight takes c6 because this knight cannot take our knight once again because of bishop takes queen. But let's say if d takes c6, there was still this move, bishop takes e7 attacking the queen. And after queen d7, the only safe move, Eric was going to play knight f6 check. And after bishop takes bishop takes now the rook on h8 was going to be under attack so black was going to play something like queen takes d1 and rook takes d1 i mean look at how badly placed eric's opponent spawns are so this is just how crazy this line that i'm showing you guys can be and this is all that eric was planning but after pawn to b5 and knight takes d4 his opponent didn't take with the knight or with the pawn See how strong players play their chess, you guys. It's not like he was memorizing anything here. He was just familiar with this position. Because he knew that after bishop takes, he was supposed to sacrifice his queen. And that's what he did. And after knight takes d4, 
knight f6 check followed by bishop h6 was going to be checkmate but that's not what happened in the actual game his opponent didn't take the queen instead he castled short then eric rosen still continued saying oh no my queen and so he just played knight f6 that's check and after king h8 look at this finish you guys knight g4 a discovery check again eric rosen said ah oh no my queen don't hurt me don't his opponent took on d4 this time and bishop f6 check was played by eric king g8 and that's how he met his opponent in an evil way can somebody tell eric that he is evil anyways let's move on all right now we go to the most popular match you guys you are going to love this. So this is the famous game between Andre In, Mitri, a 2683 Grandmaster versus none other than Kajakin Seiji, a super GM who was rated about 2760 by then during this game. So Andre In started with pawn to c4. e5 was played by Kajakin. Knight c3, then knight c6. Knight f3 anyways just starting with the two knights by the way this is the english opening i have a beautiful course on the english you guys go to my website www.casperchess.com and check out that course so far andre in is just playing everything that i talked about in that course g6 was played by kajakin this is one of the strongest defenses against the english opening this is called the king's english variation three knights system not a dubious defense by the way so white here just continued with pawn to d4 again you can see after pawn to g6 strong players always play pawn to d4 learn this trick you guys pawn to g6 equals pawn to d4 so here kasha can just took on d4 and what did white play here knight x d4 nope he played knight d5 once again our brilliant move and then kasha can played and Drakin, being a strong GM, realized that knight d5 goes together with bishop g5, just like I've kept on repeating, you guys. And this is when the super GM played knight g7. Woo! <laughs> I'm sure you can already see where this is heading, you guys. Knight x d4. Again, that's what Andrekin played here. Now, Kajakin looked at this knight and thought, that's just a free knight. But here comes queen takes d4. A sacrifice. Now, Kajakin noticed that white wanted to mate him after knight takes, knight f6 check, king f8, and bishop h6. That's why Kajakin didn't take on d4 with his knight. Instead, he played castle shot. Then, Andrekin here and cocked the move knight f6 check. After king h8 was played only move, that's when Andre King played the move knight g4, discovery check, and ladies and gentlemen, just in 10 moves, Kasha King resigned. Let's look at the last trap. So the last trap is one that can occur in the scotch game that you guys like playing. Anyway, so you go e4, they play e5, knight f3, knight c, and then instead of bishop c4 or bishop b5, you now go pawn to d4. Let them take, and that's when you play knight takes d4 this is one of the variations in the scotch game now wait a second i have some interesting videos on the scotch game and the scotch gambit the links are in the description down below or in the card above feel free to check them out because you are missing i can tell you that one of the moves that black likes playing here is knight g7 it is time to do what raise your antennas in form of your ears go on knight c3 anyways because they want to play pawn to g6 what do you do you now play bishop g5 before developing your knight to d5 anyways they will go bishop g7 and only now that's when you play knight d5 i mean intending to take the knight on c6 and play bishop takes on e7 but this is when most of your opponents are going to remember to play this move bishop takes d4 what do you do again go for it baby just sacrifice your queen attacking the rook on h8 because once again if knight takes queen you go knight f6 check if king f8 there goes bishop h6 checkmate Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If at all you did, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already to encourage me to keep on making more wonderful videos just like this one.